when Thor was still a lad, rash as most are, he went into the old giant's uh, hall for a white stone, a grand feast. The land was windswept and frigid, for this was the land that, uh, 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 at the edge of heaven, where the rivers of Alwaga had formed the rhyme that made Eomir at the beginning of time. This was where Hemir built his home and raised his cattle by the sea. And with uh, Thur was Tyr, the one-handed, calm and brave and steady. When they came to the doorway of Himisbiu, they were given new clothes of fine wool and set by the fire to melt the clinging stone from, and dry out all damp. In came a woman, gray-haired and noble, and brought them warm ale in a large horn. In came Hemia, <laughs> with a long beard that, uh, that was braided. He greeted the gods, and bid the boards be brought, and the meal laid out. Tyr sat opposite Hemia, and spoke well. Thur said little. He drank. He began telling jokes. He drank some more and told of epic games he had won at home. When the meat was brought, Thur stopped talking and began to eat. The hall stilled. First one, then another set their eyes upon Thur, for he was not food weary. He began, uh, um, uh, he began to engulf bowl after bowl, trencher after trencher, until all about him was consumed. Then he burped. He <laughs> 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 oh. laughed a booming thing. He has eaten two whole ox. From the way he eats, you would have thought he had done more than ball play. Let's slow down or I shall have to feed, get, catch a whale to feed you. Oh, the men of Hemer laugh. But who did not? He watched the giant, carp red, with deep, great eyes. No need to fret. I could catch a whale for you if you could not. <laughs> Lad, whales are common meals here. I am lord of the waters. Thur smiled. Yet I see no whale here tonight. Tyr sipped. No, we see much richer meat. The host has laid quite a table. Thur looked about him <laughs> at his empty ware. Yes, quite a table. Perhaps the boy from the mountain would like to set his own table and fish his own meat, said Bohemia. Thor provides food for all who ask. Uh, oh, will you show me your boat? Huh. I will row you myself. So Hemir and Thor rose from the table and put on clothes sealed with blubber and went out into the yard. You'll need some bait. I will provide for you. Oh, thank you, said Thor, and walked over the yacht's farm and ripped off the head. Thor, uh, uh, he looked at it. You would kill an ox to gain a fish? Oh, boy, you know little and less. <laughs> Thor's eyes bore at him. I shall show you what I know. They took the boat out and rowed to the Hivis fishing ground, still in sight of land. But Thur bade them go further out. You're too small, lad. You'll freeze out there, Himir said. But rowed them out to the whaling ground, still in sight of the seabirds. But Thur bade them go further out. Himir laughed. <laughs> no, lad, you know little and less. The waves are too large now and the wind too strong. You will die out there in the deep. Thur smiled and pulled a rock from his pouch, filled with holes. His beard was barely grown and he could not yet let play it. So he blew into the rock and the freezing wind stilled to a gentle breeze and the waves lapped lazily. The wind obeys the lord of the mountain. Grow out now, better to brave and die than linger and starve in your overfished grounds, Thur said. <laughs> Better to stay and catch less than die and catch nothing, said Hemir. But he rode out until they could hear no more birds, and the sea grew dark and deep. Thur threw out his 
line and wait. The air was so cold that Thor's small beard became stiff, but still they waited. Then the line twanged with straightness. The bull dipped. Then his arm dipped. Then the boat tipped. Thor threw his weight back. The boat bobbed up, but a terrible strength came against him. The wave sloshed into the boat as it became, began to drag behind the line. But even as a lad, Thor had strength like the mountain. And he threw all that against the line and pulled and pulled. The line came. The waves pounded as the great body neared the surface. He ready his great hook. The sunken strength pulled again and the boat rolled towards the sea. Thor heaved his body full back, slamming his foot down into the boat and threw the boat. He dropped his hook and grabbed supplies. As the water gushed in, the waves spewed and parted, and the great head of the Yarmungandr appeared. The end thread, the water worm, whose eye Thor could stand beside and still not reach the top. It stared at him with all the power, all the wildness of the sea. Thor stared back, and there the lad Thor found the eternity hidden. Him may plug the hole. Thor raised his weapon, and the Ottoman gunner lunged. And that was the first of all fishing for Thor.